Well, hello. All right. Welcome to No Summary, Golden Thread's live stream series of conversations with artists that don't fit in a box. For those who may not know, Golden Thread is the first American theater company devoted to plays from or about the so-called Middle East. We are based in San Francisco and we'll be celebrating our 25th anniversary this year. My name is R. Ronaldo Gregorian, and I've been a fan of Golden Threads since the Ziriab show that was called The Fifth String. And I've been on the Golden Thread team for a few shows, my favorite being the Zara Nurbach show called On Behalf of All Muslims. And let's see. It was a comedy special. We sold out the Brava Theater 700 seats plus waiting list and now i'd like to introduce our guests for today zara jumshed they them pronouns is a queer non-binary pakistani american engineer poet and lighting designer they're interested in using art and performance to grow connection and cultivate healing with queer and trans muslim communities if you'd like to say hello and or anything else go for it hi excited to be here and Mark Erdahi is a gay Syrian American theater director working in New York City. He has directed and produced musicals and plays in New York Musical Festival, New York Fringe, Off Broadway, and taken multiple shows on tour around the country. He has two cats, Minnie and Rufus. How'd I do? You, you got it right. <laughs> Happy to be here. Vera. Hanush, aka Vera, is an American, um, Armenian American drag king, dancer, and activist. They are a member of Rebel Kings of Oakland, Swana Kings, Southwest Asian and North African, Bay Area Development Officer for Covenant House, California, lead volunteer trainer on the LGBT National Hotline, and board member of Oclash, the Bay Area Drag Festival. How about that? That sounds about right. That's me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, apologies for not uh, memorizing my notes. I, I was asking, you know, we were talking about it. It's sort of a concert style. You're up on stage, but your cheap music is there just to get you through. Let's see, where are we? Let's get into the theme, which is the Swana queer imagination. Um, oh, I was gonna say real quick. I wanna have us all take a little breath, deep breath in and out, just to stay not too tightly wound up. And, oh, feel free, whoever's watching or uh, on Facebook Live. Feel free to message us any little thoughts or emojis, or even if you want to clap, I think we'll feel it through the screen. Let's see what's next. Okay, let's jump right in. Um, let's start with Zara. How have you engaged with your imagination and engaged with overlapping communities? Oh yeah, just like a tiny question with a very tiny answer. Um, so Aram and I met uh, in a queer Muslim healing justice space. And um, I think something that I am really appreciative of is the time that uh, the two of us have been able to spend together um, thinking about when, um, what connection is, is possible when you sort of open the door through, through art. Um, so I'm a, I'm a poet. Um, that's how I think of myself as a cultural worker. Um, and particularly as someone that is, um, I'm Pakistani American, 
Um, so I'm a little too Pakistani to be American, a little too American to be Pakistani. Um, and so in, in my writing, uh, I think a lot about the third culture, the like ways in which like kids of immigrants um, navigate two cultures that um, they both belong to and don't belong to. Um, and it's exciting to like make third culture legitimate like as its own entity um, and to be able to practice doing that in, in poetry and say things like, we pronounce our names wrong. You know, our, your uncle would probably be ashamed of us because we, you know, aren't uh, as, as committed to like tradition. Um, and yet we are very committed to tradition and reconnecting with our cultures of origin. Um, yeah, I'll leave it there. Love it. And, you know, I'm a big, big, big fan of your poetry and artistry. And just so lucky to know you for these years. And it's an interesting adventure navigating all of that, multiple layers of culture and everything. Um, just as a practice, I want to give you a snap and invite anybody to snap because I'll talk about it later briefly, but inspired by something Vera did at one of our stages a couple years ago. Jumping over to Mark, wondering what your thoughts might be on this question. How have you engaged with your imagination and engaged with our overlapping communities? Um, I think that, I think I've probably been doing that for as long as I've been creating. Um, I think it's right. I mean, we, we met in 2011. And I think that's <laughs> you see that's pretty much what I do on a day-to-day -day basis is I kind of think of how to of what's next. And I'm always thinking of what can I create next and who can I involve that doesn't fit in a box. Um, and I I think, you know, I consider myself a creator in that way. Um, so it's kind of like in my blood to keep doing that. I really I I so identified. Um, when Zara said that she's too American to be Pakistani and too Pakistani to be American. You know, Aram and I, we have had so many of those conversations. Like I always feel the same way. I'm too American to be Syrian and too Syrian to be American. That's it, you know? And I think that's, that informs so much of what I do and who I like to work with, you know? Um, and I think, yeah, that's how I do it every day. Yeah, it's been an interesting 10 years knowing you on both coasts. Just as a footnote, Zara, they then pronouns. They them, sorry. On our, on our weekend of the end of June, I know we're all juggling tons of things. And I'm just, it's been so nice, yeah, reflecting with Mark on just our careers. What of it has been professionally acknowledged or what of it is worthy? of any acknowledgement, <laughs> heavily queer. I think we're both finally just a little bit re um, stepping into the Middle Eastern Swana Mina world in theater. And I think also a little bit because what pathways have been offered to us. I feel like I've learned more just in the last two years than ever in my whole career. So big love and, you know, props to Golden Thread and the newly formed, in case anyone wants to check it out. Um, I think it's Manatma, that stands for Middle Eastern North African Theater Makers Alliance, something like that. Uh, Wendy, links. <laughs> um, thanks also, shout out to behind the scenes, Golden Thread folks. Okay, I'm just taking a breath because I need to take a breath and snaps, gotta keep myself focused. I'm also just a little bit, um, I'm a fan bot for you three. <laughs> so I get excited. Um, okay, a quick little bounce over to Vera. What might be your thoughts on this question? How have you engaged with your imagination and engaged with our overlapping communities? 
Oh, that is such, it's such a good question. I love everyone's responses thus far. I'm like thinking of mine and chewing on yours simultaneously, nom nom. But I would say, you know, I'm a drag king. And so doing drag has been the greatest kind of exploration of my imagination to date. You know, I've done dance, I've done theater. Well, and then this is, this is both. And, you know, drag for me is like 10,000 different arts all rolled into one and it's been really just healing for me gendery bendery wise and it's it's been, it's been amazing it's been, I like I just have my like eyeliner pencil just in case I need a mustache mid this panel I'm just here ready um uh but you know so that's been a deep exploration of my imagination and what I can look like how I can bring on, you know, my drag name is Vera and my actual name shock of the nation is also Vera because it really just feels like an extension of myself. So the same kind of humor and play that I have um, out of drag, I bring into drag and I love seeing how that changes when I'm in drag, what stays the same, what different audience interactions I can have, what worlds I can create. It's just the best. I can't, I could talk about drag forever, but when we think about you know, the intersecting cultural stuff for me, that's also been super g dang healing as well. You know, I, I've i been a, a peer group facilitator for a queer Swan FM's group, and then now I attend the group, which is amazing. Um, and so I did that for a while, and I've gone to queer Swan and stuff for a while, but only a couple of years ago, I would say, maybe a couple, I started delving into doing Swana drag stuff. Uh, ultimate imagination healing. I did a show called Swana King, like a one, a one man show. It was, it was great. And just like seeing the audience react to that. It just, I feel like such a beautiful moment for me, but just exploring what being a Swana King means to me also over the quarantine times, there's now a group that we're from everywhere that we've been able to connect during these times called Swana Kings. So I'm, you know, routinely talking to, you know, family, drag king family from Lebanon, from Canada, from Boston, and being a part of that. Also thinking of the third culture thing, I have learned more from like the group and from them than I ever have gotten from bio family so that's really what being a queer swana person means to me now it's shifted from being like queer swana support and also queer swana performance and that's been a really powerful journey and i just i just something you said zara about you know pronouncing our names wrong i also don't speak anything so that's been like a big thing for me but having this kind of queer swana language where we all understand and like we understand that for some reason you know for me there's like a block with what my dad will provide me with information wise because i'm queer so filling the gaps and like exploring imagination with other queer swana friends and performers has been uh amazing and and really like a, a place to explore and do fun things and do drag to rm mp3 and just like not lip sync and love it because, you know, it's, it's just, you know, you don't have to lip sync the Armenian if you just dance it. Oh, pro, my God. Pro tips. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so, like, just oozing with joy. Shout out to that um, Arm MP3 performance, just by the way, because it's a vehicle for all kinds of amazing things. So... So glad to have that in the, on the field. I guess I'll just briefly mention something that came up when you were speaking, Vera. Like I was thinking of how I've come around so like forcefully with my queer Palestine-ness. And whereas like five years ago, I didn't have access to any of that stuff. And even it was, I think less than a month ago that this group, uh, in and around Jerusalem called Al Kaos, which I'm mispronouncing, but whatever. I think it means the rainbow or the park is a queer Palestinian activist group in Palestine. And <clears throat> just watching that live Instagram thing with all those really great, I mean, Alok Menon was on there and Mickey Blanco, like really impressive people coming to just talk about Palestinian 
in this activism, artistry, existence, you know, what does it take? So I've been so inspired to like move in that direction, whereas I didn't have really much of a pathway before. It was like putting those pieces together separately. So it's interesting, but back to imagination, which overlaps in a lot of areas too, but I guess I'll ask you guys, what's a hurdle that you've had in connecting with our Swananess or Middle Easternness or Eastern Hemisphere roots and something that you can think of that got us over a little bit of a hurdle like that. Whoever wants to jump in if you have a thought. I, I think for me, um, a lot of it is, I guess, particularly from like a Muslim perspective, I guess, more than like a geographic perspective, um, like figuring out like halal to haram ratios and like how like queer and uh, vulgar and uh, inappropriate, like, am I allowed to be? Um, and how much do I uh, feel as if portraying a more like traditional version of like Islamic practices is something that like matters to me? Um, yeah, the, the halal to haram ratio. Um, I, I think that it, uh, I find it easy to get really bogged, bogged down in the idea that if you're not doing something as it was traditionally supposed to be done, then it's like not valid. Um, and I think something that really helped in general was a finding like queer Muslim community to be like, oh, I can pray and I can like not wear hijab. And like, that's art too, like being, being able to like, manifest yourself in a, in a way that feels most authentic, um, even like out, outside of an art context. Um, but then also, um, I used to live in New York City and now I live in Oakland. Um, and so the muster that I go to now is, like, is run by black folks um, and uh, is, is not as deeply committed to getting everything like exactly right. Um, in, in terms of like uh, ritual and practice, it just feels much more relaxed. Um, and it helps me feel less like I'm doing everything incorrectly um, and, and more that like you can just sort of come as you, as you are um, and there's less, um, less expectation that like we're, we're all gonna we're all gonna practice in, in a certain way that like diversity of practice is like a thing that is valuable. Yeah, I love finding any of those spaces for long-term or temporarily because yeah, being around other people who give you some cushion, I think is hard to come by oftentimes. Um, yeah. Either of you, Mark or Vera, have a hurdle that you jumped over or found a way to get over connecting with some of our roots? Hmm. Mark, would you like to go? I can go. <laughs> Arm, I have this conversation a lot. It's so, it's so, um, I won't be, I won't belabor it or be long with it, but I think it's very, for me, like it's been very personal. I think the hurdle has been very, um, personal and it's been about you know we don't need to get into it too much but it's for me to get over the hump to uh, it's dealt a lot with my own whiteness and westernness um and sort of a, a very a, a years long uh, you know ironically the pandemic you know arm and i we've talked about this the pandemic did it gave me a lot of time of introspection so i feel like I did a lot of growing over the pandemic to sort of identify with, with, you know, um, other things, but yeah, 
I think for me, it was a lot of my cis whiteness that it was, and it's an ongoing journey. I'm not saying that it's, you know, I'm done, but, um, you know, but that's been the biggest hurdle for me and sort of rediscovering a lot because I do come from a very um, multi-ethnic household. You know, that was one side that was very, very Irish and very Western and very, um, yeah, you know, normal American. And then the other side being very Syrian and very um, differently cultured. Um, and I think I had a lot of, a long time of um, conflict in my own brain about those two worlds and where I fit in. And I think I still have those conversations, but like doing things like this and doing the work that I do in New York um, and constantly pushing out um, narratives that I'm interested in telling, you know, queer narratives, um, Middle Eastern narratives to get, and that's new to me too. That's like just getting into that world um, has been great. Just pushing myself to do it. And then working sort of, um, cause I work commercially a lot with a lot of like, you know, commercial New York producers and trying to break that mold. Obviously I'm just one person and that's a lot of power, but um, that's been fun too. And it pushes me also to try to break some of that. One person, but you got us and our whole movement. Yeah, no, I, you. totally. <laughs> it's great. Mm, for me, I think a lot, I, I've resonated with everything you've both said. And for me, there's a lot of imposter syndrome going on with me being Swana, which is also due to like the paleness and also due to, I think it goes back. I've actually been like having a moment thinking about it. I think it's like a, a lot of push pull with my father. Cause I'm, I'm, um, that's my Swana side is my dad's side. And it, there's bit there's like a I can't know Swana stuff from you because I'm queer, but also because you have like daughterly expectations of me. You want me to be more Swana, but you also won't give me like the information. So there, which translates to later on me being like, do I do I deserve to delve into this? Like, can I do a play about being a Swana king if I you know don't know uh, like a timeline of dates of Armenian history circa blah blah AD BC years but I feel like I tried to educate myself a lot during Artsakh and all of that which is already like a little late so I've guilt about that but any hoodle like I feel like a lot of it is kind of imposter syndrome and not feeling like I deserve to delve into it but if not me then who like who out there is more more like anyone can can you know I I would never say that to someone else you know just I try to flip my brain sometimes and be like would you tell another like Armenian Assyrian American king that they can't do a Swana king number because I don't know no reason at all so I I kind of and that's where a lot of community has has helped but I'm still struggling and you know in queer swana spaces like a lot of times people speak Arabic and when they realize I don't it's like I've been outed and there's that there's that like I've I've failed there or something like that I'm like I can count to 10 I try to like joke about it and be like I watched Haifa workout videos I <laughs> I, I I can count I can, I can, I can say car, you know, it's just, it's just, there's a lot, there's a lot there too, but that's what it kind of evoked for me. Also, I'm still in this halal to haram scale. I used to, with a friend of mine, if we saw someone who we thought was a queer swana person, we would do the Lele ometer. So it'd be like, if they were a little queer, like Lele, and if it was more obvious, Lele, 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 it was just, so I just give that as a gift to you really. And that just came to my mind. Oh my god, I'm so oh my god, okay. Inspiration overload, but that was to be expected. Um I'm gonna make one brief comment on what you guys said because I'm I think this imposter syndrome has popped up often here and there. But I like Zara what you said about almost like I may be, you know, what you said I think I was thinking existence, our existence is a little bit of a piece of art in itself. So like, how can it be inauthentic or something like that? Um, but yeah, just so much to think about. And I think I'll take a quick break. 
um, and say hi, check in, whoever's watching. If you're just joining us, this is No Summary Golden Threads live stream series of conversations with artists that don't fit in a box. We're in conversation with Zara Jamshed, Mark Erdahi, Ver Hanush, and I'm R. Ronaldo. Feel free to post questions to the Golden Thread Facebook Live, and we can respond to those. We can check in. I'll try to check in with Chris and Wendy. And oh, okay. So my need for engagement, my you know, uh, overwhelm sense. I'm just overwhelmed on a regular basis, especially with Zoom. So happy to be here and be able to you know chat with everyone. But I have college dropout remnants where I, if I'm in a lecture, I get overloaded. So I wanted to bring this up from Vera Swana King show, which was at the Petrero stage, one of my favorite places to work and to enjoy entertainment. But we were there in the show and I have a few examples of this that really are almost life-changing um, in terms of art and entertainment. We're in the show, great show by the way, but in the middle of the show, you introduce a little bit of choreography for the seated guests, simple, almost like flash mob choreography. And that, I mean, it's audience engagement in a simple way, but it's like elevated from how do we engage this audience, laughing, clapping, crying, whatever. And this was dance and you don't even have to stand up. So that was transformative. And I just need a little bit more of that. If I'm gonna have any lecture information coming my way, I wish we can all like move around with a little bit of uh, the wave. Let me know if you have a, a thought on that or any response to that because I'm just such a big fan of that moment. I'm so glad that that was a wonderful moment for you. For me, it was really just my way to trick an entire audience to being my backup dancers for Armenian folk dance. It looks really great if you have a whole sea of people. <laughs> I also handed out Armenian flags. So everyone was waving them. Too cute. Too cute. Um, Aram, do you want to do something now? Is that, is that what you're saying? Is that is that a need, a want, a desire? I was dreaming of it. We can do it. No pressure. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Put me on the spot with the dance routine. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, if you are sitting and it's all consensual consent based, you don't have to do anything, but you can just, you know, put your hands up for three, raise the swana roof for three, and then bring it down for three. So we're going to raise it up for three. One, two, three. Raise the swana roof for three. Le, le, le. Bring it down for three. One, two, three. I feel a little better on this. Is great. One last time. One last time. If you missed it the first time, choo choo the trains here again. Bring it up. One, two, three. Raise the swan a roof. Le, 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 le. Bring it down. One, two, three. Yes. Nari, oh nari, my God. <laughs> nari, nari, nari. <laughs> I love just to drop this bit of information. When you're riding the subway in New York and the people come on who are playing the drums, I love when they give you the history of drumming. They're like, drumming is something that is done all over the world. Isn't that amazing that everyone has thought of the same thing or whatever? And I like this. Um, it has different terms, but ululation, whatever, is all over the globe. And I love when it pops up in any like outdoor gatherings in the park or, you know, protesting, marching down the street. Okay, one last little thought because this is the kind of stuff that I just kind of need to get through. I'm, I'm a big fan, you know, everyone might know of musical theater, whether that's pop up in the middle of the street, Shakespeare in the parking lot, the musical, whatever. I need to be moving a little bit to get my brain unstuck. But yeah, I went to the Women's March in 2017 or 2018 in Oakland and we went like around the lake, but it was with my YMCA dance class, hip hop dance class folks. And they had a simple flash mob choreography that we could do while we're walking. And it was just insane. The difference between holding a sign and chanting free Palestine, queer Palestine, you know, LGBTQ rights versus 
making a rainbow, <laughs> doing all kinds of stuff and having kids on the side. Any people of all ages watch and like come and take video or join in. The difference I think is so tangible to me. And I don't know if everyone agrees, but that's kind of where I'm trying to sneak this audience engagement in. All right, let's see, time check. Halfway through, I'll see if there's any info in the chat. But yeah, feel free to let me know, Wendy and Chris. Let's see, where do we stand? Okay, it's tough because I think we're juggling here art and queerness and Swananess, Middle Easternness, even those labels, I think, are something that is hard to define. They're elusive, they change. Um, who has maybe a thought on the term Swana or the term queer or Swana queer? Because <laughs> those are almost like new terms I haven't used my whole career as a person. <laughs> maybe the past few years and I'm embracing it as much as I can, but until it evolves into some other language. No pressure, meditation, rumination is also part of our hangout. Hi audience, we love you, whoever you are. Also a note, big fan of um, Golden Thread YouTube channel, check out the, this no summary will be on there, previous no summaries. And I think how around theater comments, they have a nice channel that have some of our Golden Thread previous shows. That's a big question, Aram. I'm just thinking about it. I, I like the term swana. It makes me feel like part of a community in the same way queer makes me feel part of a community. I feel like they're both very, they're kind of, I've never really thought about this, but swana is just like that kind of feeling for me as queer as to that part of my life. They're both the all-inclusive terms that make me feel warm and snugly. And swana queer together is just like, peanut butter and jelly, other delicious flavors together, hummus and tabbouleh, mm, delicious. It's just, uh, you know, they just really go together for me. Swana king, swana queer. And I feel like there's room in, there's room in queer for me for all of my gendery bendery stuff, which is nice. And there's room for swana for me in terms of being, I, I feel like I can say that, you know, that, that, um, that even with all my imposter syndrominess, like that still feels good and, and like accurate. And I don't have any hesitation because I feel like that's open to diaspora and stuff like that. Us children of immigrants and et cetera, et cetera. No. Yeah. Those comfy spaces with coziness and support are just so hard to come by and they change so much. Uh, I like, I don't remember who brought it up, but um, you know, chosen family, the concept, I just had never really felt like it was for me or that I needed it. And suddenly it was a huge thing that I felt suddenly I'm in it and it's taken, you know, uh, got, jumped to the forefront just out of like over time, you see who you still are fighting the battles with or who's there got your back for a moment. Anyway, I digress. Um, any other thoughts on the term swana queer, swana or queer? They seem so young to me and yet I embrace them. Yeah, I remember, I mean, before this show, I was like, Aram, do I count as swana? Um, is Pakistan part of swana? Um, so, I think just in, in general, um, there's not a lot of, there hasn't been historically a lot of language through which to be like, oh yeah, this is the, this is the community that I'm, that I'm part of. Um, and if, instead, I feel like I often get lumped in as, as they see, which is how like I identify as like of this subcontinent. Um, but, um, 
I feel like so much more about how I like move in in the world as a racialized person has much more to do with like how my religion is racialized more than like my physical features like as like an Asian person. Um, so Swana is a term that feels very new for me um, that I'm like enjoying sitting in and, and being being a part of um, and like feeling a lot of like kinship with. Um, and then with queerness, queerness just feels so like expansive and like um, relaxing. I don't know, it feels like there's less um, expectations to be or act or move a certain way. And that like, particularly as like a non-binary person being able to hold like masculinity and femininity at the same time, being able to, um, yeah, play, play multiple roles, have the, the space to try new things. And then if it doesn't work, try something else. Like it's very, it's very fluid. It's very, um, yeah, expansive. It, it just feels uh, very freeing and liberating. Yeah, I've had fun with the term swana sort of crossing i mean it's it's an embrace in a way and i think back to that ziriab show the fifth string just how this artist was somewhere in arabia and made his way over to spain and hung out with the jews and the spaniards and the arabs and he was doing art and fashion and i don't know what you know but the historical islamic empire of sorts that like, just goes everywhere but we can see how we're connected in some ways um, I guess, Mark, I want to ask real quick because Swana and queer being youngish terms, but, you know, we've chatted about how when we sort of started out, it was like gay.com. You're gay, you're gay. That was a, you know, slur. It was like, uh, you know, that's, that's so gay. We had to take that back. And then, you know, like, how do we, that's stuck in the LGBTQIA plus and we don't always have time for all of that. That's it's very correct. <laughs> I mean, Swan is new to me too. I think I'm still figuring out how to how to what to what to do with that for my art. Um, but the yeah, I mean, I think queerness for us, for me, you and I, having known you, has definitely evolved over the past decade. You know. But I, I agree. I mean, it's such an expansive term and I've taken, I've done like a lot of, um, I just took a great class last, uh, last semester. It's in a school that was called Queer New York and it was just all beautifully studying queer history and queer culture and what it means today. Um, and you know what, it, <laughs> there is no definition of what it means. Right? I mean, there's a basic definition, but it's kind of what you make of it if you identify as queer. Um, yeah but it certainly has evolved from those gay.com days. <laughs> <laughs> How dare um, you <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's our history, you know? Like, I like checking in with just the timeline. I mean, the more that we exist, the more our uh, resume takes on another page that no one's ever gonna really read. But um, a, a quick question from me that I've, I'm sneaking from my other Sparkle Awards show is who is someone that inspires you in the moment right now? You know, it can be a friend, it can be someone you don't know, but you know, like someone that's you've had for a long time or someone that's just popped up and you're like, oh, they're giving me so much energy and you can use it in some of our artwork, our existence, our community stuff. Whoever has a thought, feel free to share. I can go just because I also want everyone to follow this person immediately on Instagram. Uh, King Baba Moon is one of the most creative drag kings I've ever encountered. And is, you know, I get constant inspiration and is, you know, 
very kind of to me young because I'm 30 <laughs> and they're like 21. I just can't even, but they do a lot of beautiful uplift of Swana culture, part of my Swana Kings group. The, the paints are just so beautiful. They did a beautiful number recently to an Arabic song where they were both um, like mama and baba moon. So the, the, the femme articulation and the mask singing to each other a, a love song. And I just, I sat there and I was like crying. I was hosting this show too. It was bad. I was like in tears. It was just so beautiful and powerful. And every time they post anything, I'm like, well, that's a reason to go on going because you know they are in the world and I get a lot of inspiration from my drag children Lotus Boy is another phenomenal performer and my brother Hota Mercury so just throwing all those angels out there inspiration inspiration overload continues any thoughts no pressure you can share whenever you like to we have, we have ample room to schmooze. So I like to just hang out with you guys. I've been really lucky that in my day job, I've met a lot of really amazing artists. Um, and so there was a, a group of three of us, um, myself, uh, Marissa Leshnov, who is an incredible, incredible photographer. Um, and my friend Becca Holtz um, is like a like unbelievable jazz singer. Um, and so even though our mediums for art were all like really, really different, we would, you know, go to happy hour after work and we'd like share what we were working on. We'd talk about um, how like nerve wracking it is to try to monetize our passions like as young people um, who are trying to take their art more seriously. Um, and yeah, being able to have that um, community. I'm like, is this what like, you know, enlightenment salons like felt like for like old white people? Like, is that this feeling that we've like cultivated here of, uh, yeah, having a lot of really different interests, but like kind of meeting in this, and this want for um, like to express ourselves as like clearly as possible to, um, I don't know, the like pursuit of mastery is just like a really beautiful thing that I find so gorgeous about art. Um, and yeah, so the two of them really, really inspired me to take my art more seriously and to try to like bring it out into the world more. Mark, if you have a thought, feel free to share. Now I'm noticing the time and it, I'm realizing we're running out of time, <laughs> six minutes. So I'm gonna read the questions in the chat and you can share, Mark, if you have an inspirational person. All right, I mean, just, I, we only have six minutes, that's so long. <laughs> Let's see, there's some questions. Well, okay. In an imaginary situation, you're gonna put a show together with all of this stuff rolled into one. And what's like a top three way to approach it? Make a dream come true. Anyone can share five minutes, no pressure. I can go because I think there was a question for me, which is kind of similar to this about how do you take from, from conception to production? How does that happen? And for me, maybe it's because I'm a Virgo, but I make a lot of lists, lists. It's, oh, it's just so they're so good. And I think about where, where I want to start and where I want to end. And then I kind of almost rainbow arc it like back towards the middle and where I want the kind of big moment to be. And when I did my Swana King show, I knew I had certain themes I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about family rejection. I wanted to talk about 
loss of you know cultural language i wanted to talk about drag i wanted to talk about my gender i wanted to talk about you know uh, all like all of these things and it was like a 30 to 45 minute show and i was like okay how do i do all of that and what kind of things can i do where so i wanted to also have some drag numbers just interspersed in there so how to weave in and out of them and have monologue monologue dialogue that would kind of make sure that I hit all of them and I ended with um my my cousin is a Solana comedian <laughs> and does funny cover songs so I ended with his um rap about hummus which I just and grape leaves so I feel like that yeah I, I think I actually did the grape leaf song but he also has a rap about hummus because why limit yourself that's really the the message that I have why limit yourself um but just kind of building block it to make sure that when you add it together intricately, every message that I want is in there and kind of seamlessly between with, with the, with the kind of thread, golden thread, to see what I did there, a thread of humor throughout, because that's kind of what has sustained me both um, emotionally as a person, as a Swana queer person, as a performer and how that can even be evocative and lead to a more telling of truths. Love it. We're going to use it. We're going to run with it. Such good sharing. 30 second thoughts, one minute thoughts. If you guys want to share anything. Um, when I guess I'm going to talk about like lighting and, and not poetry. I had the opportunity while I was in school to become an electrician and a lighting designer in the like college theater of mine. Um, and like the first thing that I got to light was a devised theater piece by a friend of mine. Um, and it was all uh, students of color that had um, written their their own skits um and i guess part of starting this project for me involved just like how do i how do i capture your the beauty of your melanin like through the light um so often it's uh many lighting designers will just sort of like take all their colors based on the appearance of like white cast members and often leaves uh, people of color really like washed out. Um, so I don't know, I think it's all about like, like collaboration and respect. Like how do I, as your like tech person, hold, um, like put, set you up for success by like trying to make sure that like my my art is as respectful as like your art is um so like you you're already starting from a a place of community and and from like teamwork i think that's the most exhilarating thing about any sort of like collaborative performance art is um being able to yeah have that that mutual respect for each other's crafts Go team, go. Uh, Mark, any thought on, you know, making that, you know, trying to share our uh, Swana queerness, but thinking about the whole team, like how do you make something that maybe not everybody's on the same page, including us, we're just catching up in a sense sometimes, make it real. Oh, I mean, I think that's about open communication and collaboration. And I think it's bringing about a, bringing on a diverse as diverse a team as possible. You know, obviously not just optically, but like, to, but who you want to work with. Um, and I think when you, you know, you you've seen me in, in a room before working and stuff like that, so you know that it, collaboration and stuff comes so naturally to me. Sometimes to a fault, I think I I just love hearing everybody's opinions and like forming my own based on what's best for the group. So I think that's like the, one of the biggest ways. I mean, if everybody just asks questions and isn't afraid of the answers and 
has open communication and dialogue with the team. I think that's how you create the best kind of art. And I, I would imagine, I think, not imagine, I know also the best kind of queer art and I imagine the best kind of Swana queer art. It's so evolving. It's so dependent on our artistic partners, our friends, if we're in a pandemic or not, or leftovers. <laughs> but yeah, I love being able to chat with you guys about this. Um, yeah, I guess before I do our little outro, what's a, some kind of a takeaway each of you might have for people in our community, people outside of our community, the young aspiring tweens who are like, where do I go? And our elders who are like, what the heck are you doing? I can go for our elders, get on, the, get on board, get on the train, shoot, shoot, get like, you know, I, I have so much love and respect and I just had like the most awkward Father's Day call of my life, but I, you know, I'm just, we're here, you know, I, for me, it's, I'm providing so much love, return it, meet me, let's, let's, let's do this. There's no, there's no reason to have like a generational gap here because of queerness. There's just it's my thoughts. Who I could go on, but for people who are into like Quana, Quana, Quana Swears, Quana. Oh my God, let's reset. It's one of queers. I just kind of want to make it one word now and make a group. But anyway, that's for a later time. I would say just whatever you're hesitating on doing, absolutely do it. And if you, if, if like, if that happens to be in the realm of drag, absolutely contact me because I co-host a show that welcomes newbies and specifically like, it's like, if this is your first time, we would love to be there with you. And I'm also a drag parent. So we're here. And just that there are people out there in community who want to lift you up. That's what I would say. Said well. Seconded. Parting thoughts. Yeah. Um, I was listening to a podcast called Diaspora Babes, and it was talking about um, it was talking about art and like why prioritizing art is important. Um, and something that the host said that I feel like I'm gonna remember for a really long time is like so much of us worry, like who cares about our art? Who, um, I'm gonna make this thing and then, and then what, like what impact is it going to have? Um, and so what the host said was like, no one's gonna care about your art as much as you do. No one's gonna be as invested in your like, creative potential as you are and that that is like both a responsibility and also incredibly liberating to be like who cares I care um and this is about fulfillment and um uh expression and that it can feel really embarrassing to express a lot of emotions we're taught to repress a lot of emotions in our culture um and so expressing them publicly and through words, like in particular, like oof, ouch, vulnerable. Um, but um, that since it is truly about like what benefit, joy, uh, release you get from, from creation, uh, that is absolutely like worth doing and that your like art is worth like sharing with the world and like it you know sometimes someone might not be ready for it but sometimes someone will and like the best part of performance to me is like at the end where like that one person comes up to you and it's like that really resonated with me and you're like it doesn't matter who else heard what I had to say that person really heard me and like that's something that's really precious. 
<sighs> well, I mean, okay, I'll echo just a little bit of that because I think I feel so lucky for this luxury to be with all of you because it's also, you know, sometimes we can be a little bit on the same page enough to not have to explain every single thing. And that's the little luxuries I'd like to take with our artist colleagues and such. So I'll wrap it up real quick. It seemed like we had an endless time and suddenly there's no time. Okay, I love you all so much. Thank you all for whoever's watching or who's gonna watch in the future. Um, we have come to the end of our time. Thanks to my LGBTQ plus comrades, Zara, Mark, and Vera. You can connect with all of us. I don't know, we'll put the links in the YouTube notes as usual. Um, let's see, connect with Golden Thread, sign up for the weekly email, follow on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Thanks to HowlRound for hosting us and Wendy, Sahar and Chris and the whole team. Yeah, and when the YouTube comes out, rewatch, share with your friends and such. And I look forward to, you know, the future theater scene as we're unwinding slowly. Let's see what else are my acceptance speech notes. Thank you all for attending, sharing the space with me. Have a nice weekend. Oh, it's the weekend. What a weekend. All right. Oh. Uh, wrap myself up in a little unwrappable box until further eruption. Bye guys. <laughs>